the tundra in North Manitoba, outside of the town of Churchill, I saw my first live polar bear. This is where they say it takes two trees to make a Christmas tree due to the winter gales that burn the windward sides of the fragile spruce. It's day three, early morning, and we're already jolting along in a huge tundra buggy, scanning the horizon for the creamy white of even one bear. I'm in the company of a group of naturalists. While they search for the perfect photo, I dream of line, shape, pattern and colour, all the elements that will make an interesting painting. There is a moment when we approach an oasis of aubergine coloured willow bushes and we see the back of a prone white figure. The driver cuts the engine and tension fills the truck as cameras are lifted, focused and Everyone is trying not to explode with excitement. We're as close as is possible to see the hairs of its coat and the coal black eyes slowly open. The round shape of a female's head rises above the bushes and watches us. With the first flurries of snow, a memory comes out of the Arctic sky, gently at first then tumbles down the stairs of so many years. It lands on the fourth step of my childhood and settles like the quiet world within a snow globe. I'm standing behind my mother, inside the front door. She has a sprig of holly in her hand that has fallen off the Sacred Heart picture and I have the measles. As she opens the door, the snowflakes blow in onto the lino and the postman hands her a bulky brown paper parcel tied with white twine. She puts her hand into her apron pocket and takes out a half crown, the Christmas box. She hands it to him. They exchange greetings Bye. and he is gone. My father said that Christmas began with his birthday on the 26th of November. My mother said it began on the 8th of December when the country people came to town to do their Christmas shopping. Christmas began for me when the parcel came. Every year that parcel came from my Auntie Tess in England and every year the Queen of England came with it, stamped in several images across the front and written in my aunt's handwriting on the side was old clothing personal belongings. There's a jumble of pictures in my head of the things that came over the years. Hand knitted socks, willow pattern plates, a tiny jug with a hole in the bottom of it and jelly babies but this year it's different. There's a jacquard waistcoat, a pipe with a packet of tobacco, a wraparound black coat for the opera and a child's pea green jumper. Stuffed into one of those green sleeves is a small package wrapped in a tissue. It's hard in the centre. I find three tiny figures hidden in there. A mother bear, her cub and a penguin. Each standing on their own piece of ice, silent in an eternal winter of frozen porcelain. I'm juggling the details of this memory when the gasps of excitement in present time call me back and I steady myself on my sketchbook and look out into the Arctic desert. My childhood memory has come alive. In front of my eyes, a small body, a cub's head, appears above its mother's back. Mother looks to the left, turns, looks at us and leans over onto the other side, deliberately and slowly moving four massive paws in the air. Baby is missing for a minute, but soon its head is seen nuzzling into its mother's belly. In a consorted effort of accommodation, the cub finds its milk, thrusts and pushes, and then there's a visible relaxing of the smaller cream body. 
mother with her left paw pulls her offspring closer and nurses it while sitting. In that space between thoughts where dreams are born, I want to call my mother, talk to her and remind her of the parcel. I want to tell her about the real bears and the magic out here in this far off place with the pea green sea. But time has passed and many tides have washed the shores of Hudson Bay. She is beyond phones and spruce trees now, having travelled outside of time and beyond the moon and stars. She lives in her own world, far from the Arctic Circle and the concerns of the ordinary day and night.